Do you want to know the difference between a driver swing and an iron swing? Then stay tuned to this video. Hey golfers, I'm Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm joined by Danny Farrell, Master Club Fitter at the Second Swing Minnetonka store. Mm -hmm. Danny, we've seen a lot of different swings come into the fitting bay, mm -hmm. a lot. And a lot of times we may try and give a tip here or there with regards to attack angle yeah. or uh, how they're swinging the driver or how they're sure. swinging the seven iron. Sure. And we're going to discuss today, is the driver swing the same as the seven iron swing or what makes the differences? Great. I, I love this topic. You know, when we kind of break down what attack angle is, we've got to keep it simple, right? It's either we're swinging down or we're swinging up at it. It's as easy as that. But people that come in don't know what they're doing. That's the benefit of TrackMan. We get to see that and then uh, kind of push that into the results through the fitting as well. So, you know, when we look at the PGA Tour averages, talk to me about that. Um, do players swing down more so with the driver and the irons on the PGA Tour? Well, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because it's different for a lot of golfers out there. Yep. Uh, control, if yep. you hit down on the ball, it is easier to control the ball and generate a little yep. bit more spin on the iron. So, yep. a lot of the golfers out on the PGA Tour they're actually not hitting the ball as far as they possibly could. Mm -hmm. You look at Rory McIlroy, for example, sure. his controlled swing is pretty neutral, but when yeah. he wants to go after it, he hits up on it. Yep. He can hit it far, but he yep. can hit it pretty far offline too. <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> but the LPGA is another great example. Yeah. I'd say my build probably is similar to there. I'm shorter. I'm, I don't have a lot of muscle on my body. Okay. I hit up on the ball because I use it as a way of advantage to keep up with the, the bigger wise. hitters, yeah. distance wise. Yeah. And the LPGA, ladies, if they don't hit the ball far enough, they're going to be hitting a lot of hybrids, a lot of fairy woods into the par fours. Yep. And they've found a way to still hit the ball far, but yet pretty straight. Right. So right. attack angle, it's really important when it comes to the driver. But exactly. is it important with the iron as well? 100%. 100%. Take me, for example, I don't swing very far down at it. I'm pretty neutral, if not even up. So because of that, I don't generate much spin. My irons are all weak, and I, I'm like you and the driver. I have to swing up to chase the distance. But some players are the exact opposite where they swing down at it and generate more spin, and we have to fit to lower that down. So right. it is quite a bit different. And trying to fit for someone that really has a steep attack angle inside can be a little bit of a challenge yes, too, because we're hitting off an artificial mat, and it may hurt them. Right. I mean, I'm a great example is when I'm hitting inside, mm -hmm. I'm intentionally, I don't want to hit down on that mat. I hit a lot of shots testing clubs, and you'll notice I hit the ball a little further because my spin rate stays down like you. Right. But when I get outside, the spin rate is a little bit higher because yep. I take a little bit more turf. Makes sense. But I'm still more of a picker than what you'd consider tour average, which sure. PGA Tour with a seven iron, the tech angle is about negative 4.3. Right. Anything with regards to a higher attack angle or a more lower negative number mm -hmm. is considered more of a digger. Yep. Anything closer to neutral is considered more of a picker. Right, right. right. And yeah, that, let's face it, they're just trying to hit the, the fairway. And as I mentioned yeah. with the PJ Tour driver, yeah. they hit down on the ball a little bit. I think yeah. negative 1.3 is tour average. Yeah. And I think it's like positive two or positive three is LPGA tour average. Right, and you brought that up earlier, right? The guys on tour, they want to swing down because they have the speed. Whereas the ladies, we're trying to get speed and take advantage of the launch by swinging up at it. So right. two different ways to go about it. And then the fairways are tight on the PJ Tour, right. and that rough is thick. And if you're in that rough, <laughs> yep. good luck. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so today we're going to do an interesting test. We're going to be comparing driver and seven iron numbers. Okay. What the challenge will be is, is hitting off the turf when I move that ball position further forward with the seven iron. Yep. So for seven iron, I'm going to have two different ball positions. I'm going to have it in the middle of my stance. Okay. So pretty much where I normally would play a seven iron. Yep. And then I'm actually going to try it up at driver position. More middle or more so forward? More okay. forward, because I feel like I'm going to hit more up on it, and we'll take a look at numbers there. Sure. And then with driver, we'll do the same. Well, my normal position, kind of on my left heel. Yep. But then we'll try that driver position out in the middle of my stance and see what happens to my attack angle. Should be fun. Let's see what happens. Look at that, minus 4.5. <laughs> okay. 
So, Thomas, we just kind of took three swings. Talk to me about where that ball position was for you there. So I had that right in the middle of my stance. Okay. Generally speaking, I have the ball position just a little bit further forward with, okay. with my seven iron. Okay. I talked about attack angle, yeah. me being more of a picker. Yeah. Well, even still, when I was trying to get hit down a little bit more, I was only at 3.4 3 on average. Right. Um, so ball position is going to really influence what your attack angle was Absolutely. like with every, every club. Absolutely. So I, I think not only does it help with attack angle, we see a lot of players where that face angle is still open at impact at certain points in where the ball is. So I think we might see it, you know, you able to kind of square that club face up a little bit more too, because we did leave that open more so than I'm used to seeing. Right. You. And I'm normally a little drawer of the ball. And Absolutely. That didn't want to come back for me. No, it didn't. So. Okay. So let's move this ball position further forward. So I'll move okay. it up towards my left heel. Okay. So this is basically like a kind of driver. This is position closer to driver. Yep. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's positive a little 1. Two. <laughs> so that to me felt like there was no turf interaction at all. Yeah. I, I had just like picked that. Yep, and nicely. Uh, One point two up. So big swing from where it was just by moving the ball a little bit. I feel like that turned over a little bit for me. It did. Okay. I can see that, that ball starting just a little bit further to the left Yeah. by moving that ball position forward in my stance. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens to my path and my face angle as well on those sure. three shots with each one. So attack angle 0.5 up, so big swing again just by moving ball position too. Right. You know, another thing is kind of that face angle piece, right, where we're more positive when that face angle was, you know, when the ball was more middle of the stance. Yeah. Now by moving it up, not only does it give a higher launch, but it helps kind of square that face up and turn it over for you too. Yep, consistently curving to the left, so we'll yep. say 24 left on average versus four to the right, right. when the ball position was more in the middle of my yeah. stance. But take a look at the launch angle change. Huge, I mean, four degrees. Right. Spin was the same, because loft's the same. Well, I'm almost hitting up on it four degrees more. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. so I hope it touches the sky there. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting the spin rate stayed, stayed the same. Right. Um, <laughs> But yeah, numbers were different, but it's just a, wow, that is, that is different. Yeah. So yeah. bull position is really important with, with your iron, where you, where you have it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so moving on to driver. This is where we might start seeing some, some, some big differences. Some goofy stuff, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. might be a little goofy, like, as I mentioned, hopefully I don't put a dummy mark on my <laughs> driver or anything like that. Might have to tee the ball down just a little bit lower <laughs> right. if I move that right. bull position in the middle. But that's, let's start out in the middle Kay. and see how, how it goes. Let's do it. Oh my God. <laughs> I hit down on the bull. You did. Wow. That face was wide open. That is the furthest I think I've ever hit it right <laughs> in my life with, with driver. Ball position might, you know, have more of a drastic effect on the driver. Right. <laughs> Maybe not as far right, but that's still pretty far right. And I still can't hit down on it. Yeah. Look at that. I'm still oh. slightly up. Yep. Look at that launch angle. That's there we go. Enough. We got there one when is. I hit down on it. I actually hit that one really well. Yeah. Look at that smash factor. 149. <laughs> right. But, Lots wow, is that different. Oof. I don't like the fact that I only carried that 235 yards. Right. Yeah. And that was, that was hit right out of the screws. Solid, yeah. yeah. It's just 2.7 down at it, so you show less loft, right? Right, so I would need more so loft in, on the yeah, driver. So in this instance, what would you do if you're trying to fit a golfer? If you, you're like not going down the lesson route, obviously, we're just trying to fit them for their golf swing. Yeah. They need more loft, right? Absolutely, you're seeing the spin at 1800. There's not enough to keep that up. You brought up 235 on the carry. There's a huge potential for more carry just to add more spin. And that can also help with face angle to close that a little bit too. Yeah, so that's this golfer might need 11 degrees of loft, even yeah. 12 degrees of loft on yeah. their driver. And that's not uncommon. When we see players come in that swing down, we automatically grab more loft to help offset that and vice versa. If the guy swings up, generally you can go a little bit lower in loft to lower the spin rate for him too. Right. Well, let's move that ball position forward now with the driver and see what happens. Let's I'm going to feel it. a lot more comfortable here. <laughs> 
I think that carry has got to go up a long way. Up 7-6. Okay. That's my swing right there. Maybe not quite 7-6, but I'm usually around about 5 or 6 degrees up when same. I hit my driver. Yeah, same here. But look at the carry, right? When you swung down, the total was about 283. Now we just carried it that way. Beautiful. Yeah, so carry distance on that last one, same as what my total distance was with yep. the, the other drives. Yeah. Was it a little bit easier to swing with that ball position more forward for you? It felt a lot more comfortable. Uh, I, I will say because the sacrifice I do have is because my attack angle is so far up, yeah. is sometimes my dispersion might get a little bit larger. Right. It yep. just, let's face it, if you have less spin on the ball, and your attack angle is so far up. And that's yep. why I told pros when they have a lot of speed, mm -hmm. like they swing 10 miles an hour faster than what I do with my club speed. Sure. They need to hit down on the ball just right. to be able to control it. Yeah. Unless you're, I mean, you see where Bryson DeChambeau hits it. Mm -hmm. It's either great or it's uh, <laughs> right. nowhere to be found. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But take a look at this too. We brought up kind of how ball position can change impact and strike to or face angle. And when that ball was more in the middle of your stance, you brought up the point, I've never seen a ball go that far right. I've never seen you hit one that far right. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, I'd be curious <laughs> to see what my face and path numbers are compared, sure. comparing those with, yeah, with, with driver. Because um, I, I know my path is usually pretty neutral with, with driver. Yeah. Um, yep. So we're kind of right in here now. Yep. So I, it's interesting, my path with the ball position being back, yep. I've got nowhere to go. Right. So <laughs> it's going to be... Out towards Inside the right. Out. Yep. Yeah. So my path when I had mobile position kind of on my left heel, 0 0.1. I'm yeah. a very happy guy. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, face angle. So face angle was open. 3.6. Uh, it was open 9.9 .9 degrees with middle ball position. Yep. So my path and face angle would just go on that way. Oh yeah. The golf ball always follows <laughs> that dire the direction yeah. the face is pointing, while my face angle was on average squaring up. Right. Right. Because I had more time, so it's later on the golf swing. Right. The golf swing is on an arc. Yes. So yes, you know, the golf swing is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Because the club's longer, yeah. you're going to be standing further away from it. Right. Also because it's longer, you move that ball position further forward to right. give it more time for that club to come around. Yeah. So really the golf swing isn't different. I'm still swinging on pretty similar plane. Yeah. It's just ball position and distance I'm standing from the ball is what's influencing Right. A lot of this. Right. And, you know, going back to kind of the swing up or swing down, there's no right or wrong in the game of golf. Right. It's just what you do. But players have to come in and get fit. That way they can see the results on track, man, and know what they're doing. Otherwise, it's hard to see outside, isn't it? Right. And it is hard for us to fit a golfer that's hitting across seven degrees and down seven degrees. <laughs> right. At that point, we may recommend them to, to go see a PG instructor. Sure. Or we might even give them a, a, little, bit of a, a little bit of a tip. But right. Right. There's, at that point, there's really nothing that I can do, draw a bias club, because if they're coming across it and they're hitting a big cut, I just close that face on them even more. Yeah. It's going to start even further left. Exactly. What it's going to do is it's going to just, yep. yeah, it's yep. going to change the direction the ball is going to end up, but it's going right. to start further left. Right. Yeah. So it's, right. yes, you want to try and get as neutral as you, as you can with path. Yeah. Yes, you want to hit down it with your irons. Yep. You want to hit up with the driver if you can. Yes. Or at least try and get as close as you can to neutral. Yeah. 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 So ultimately, players, take a look at the ball position that you're playing right now. Does it lead to good results or bad results? But anyways, if you like what you saw, comment, hit like, and also subscribe. We'll see you next time.